takes, your friends, <laughs> and we're back, and we're back in the countryside, Yay. having another nice little walk. We have come to the Quantox in Somerset for the weekend, and we are on in like the Quantock Hill area right now, which is rather nice. I don't know why they call it the Quantock Hills, it's beyond me. Yeah, I don't see any hills. So, we want to talk about a film called Isle of Dogs. <laughs> the latest film from Wes Anderson, and we went to see it recently. But this isn't really going to be a review, so we're walking. We're not like sitting, reviewing furiously. interesting about Isle of Dogs that I've discovered is that if you say to people, oh, I'm going to see a film called Isle of Dogs, they might think you're saying you're going to see a film called I Love Dogs, which really conjures up quite a different image, I think. Like secretly have like a t-shirt with a dog face on under like a work shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I heard an interview with Wes Anderson where he was saying that, yeah, he just kept going past Isle of Dogs and the sort of sign for it. And he just started imagining what an Isle of Dogs could be. Yeah. Which I think is quite cute. It's almost like a child's imagination of like, you know, when you've... I, I don't know why, like, when I was a kid, I used to get the word Oxford and octopus mixed up. Aww. So like, I always imagined like an octopus. <laughs> like just this, I don't know, like this giant octopus, like in the city. But yeah. It's, I'm... That's Am I just horrible. rambling here? <laughs> Fine. Yeah. That start is a mean to go on. I think it's kind of nice that he just sort of thought, what would an Isle of Dogs be like? Actually, what he imagined is quite dark. Yeah, very dark. I would have imagined Isle of Dogs in a maybe a slightly more utopian light. It would have been full of bounding puppies. Yeah. But not in this one. No. Mine would have just had loads of dog shit in it. Uh, you're more of a realist than me. Something that's kind of special about this film for us is that when we first met, one of the first conversations we ever had was about Fantastic Mr. Fox, which obviously is Wes Anderson's other animated film. Yeah. That's done in the same style, that kind of like stop motion, but with weird furry puppets. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it better than that. What would yeah. you say? Yeah, furry puppets is quite accurate, I'd say. <laughs> I think that film has so much charm and character. Yeah. And I. I guess it is fair to compare it to Isle of Dogs, right? Because it should be fairly similar, you'd think? Yeah. I think there's some really funny jokes Yeah. in, in it, but actually, yeah, the general tone is quite downbeat. I'd say it's very dark, actually, and it's definitely not a children's film, whereas I think Fantastic Mr Fox isn't, like, it's not just exclusively a children's film, but, like, children will find it less disturbing yeah i think and it's like a bit more wholesome and the plot is probably a little bit complicated for, for a child to follow well the thing is they how it's been set up is the dogs are the ones that speaking english and because it's set in japan the people are speaking in japanese but yeah. they don't use subtitles in it there's a woman who's commentating on events going on and she's speaking in English and yeah. she's translating. You can understand why they do it as a, like, a concept. It's very interesting. Yeah. But as an actual film technique, I wouldn't say it's that the most entertaining way to tell the story. No, I think it would have worked better if there was less of it. Going into the film with such high expectations, yeah, I can't help but feel a little disappointed that there were parts when we were watching it where I was like, okay, I'm a little bit bored right now. Yeah. And that's really sad, I think. Well, yeah, that was what I said to you when we left, didn't I? I said, that felt like it was like, because like, we went to see it at seven o'clock and then when the trailers were all done, it was probably about half seven, it started and we left at nine. I was like, oh, I'm surprised it's that early because I thought it was longer than it was. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's mostly down to probably the last part of the film. That's it. Then that's what I. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Actually, is that the ending is weird because well, it takes the dogs me, off of the like dog, the like the trash island place. 
Yeah. And that sort of physically is sort of moving away from the good stuff, isn't it? The ending didn't feel very earned to me. Yeah. When it, when it resolved, I just didn't quite follow how it had got there. Yeah. And I, I know we're, we're trying to avoid spoilers. The film ties everything up quite neatly, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. The part where it was tying it up, it lost me over that bit. Yeah. Not because it was complicated, but because I just didn't follow and I didn't feel a sense of relief. Yeah. Because I didn't feel, I felt like part of it was maybe too rushed yeah. to the bit, to the climax. I, also, I didn't really feel a climax. Yeah. It just sort of almost skipped the climax. I think the problem <laughs> as well is that there's not really any tension in it because there's only one way it was going to go. Obviously, like, the way it got there was could have been anything, but you kind of knew what the outcome was going to be. It's a shame, I think, because the film is so beautiful, every yeah. bit of it. And the sound, there's, like, the style is incredible. Yeah. The elegance of everything. You know, you just don't get many dark adult oriented animations yeah and this is like one of the best you could think of to achieve that i obviously then missed out on important things which was the story i feel like it was trying to do the story as well it wasn't just trying to be like a spectacle but it didn't achieve the story very well because it was like still more focused on the style of it whereas i think that fantastic mr fox hit it right in the sense that like Oh, I mean, obviously it wasn't actually his story. It was his, like, sort of um, based on Roald Dahl's like, amazing yeah. story. But anyway, like that, but maybe that helped. <laughs> but, maybe, um, yeah, because the characters like, were already there. And yeah, I but think... he obviously got went into more of, like, a in-depth thing on him, Mr. Uh, Fantastic Mr Fox's um, character. So you did, it was like a character film, wasn't it? Like, his sort of development and stuff and his relationships with people, and it worked really well. What we said earlier is that this film started with the idea you know, he said in the interview it started with the idea of the place yeah and that's it like this film started from a setting yeah and it kind of and it's been developed from there and actually that it feels like that doesn't yeah, it yeah definitely <laughs> the thing is I don't want to like give the impression that I didn't enjoy it. I really did enjoy it. Yeah. It was a really good cinema it's experience. Really good, yeah. And I'm happy that we saw it. Just have those reservations. I just can't see it having as much appeal to like a general audience yeah. as, as his other more recent films. Yeah. And But visually I think it's his best. I put it with Grand Budapest Hotel was like visually his best film. Yeah. Um, I really like the style. I know a lot of people would find it quite... The animation's very dark and, like, spooky. And um, Whereas Fantastic Mr Fox obviously has a sim very similar thing, but, like, the tone, like, the colour tone. The colour palette's so yeah. much warmer in yeah. Fantastic Mr so Fox. So it kind of, like, it gives it kind of... It feels more kooky than, like, unnerving. Whereas, yeah, I yeah. love dogs even... Well, the poster for it's terrifying. It's just all the dogs' faces and stuff. And it's like, oh, God, actually... I think like but there's beauty in the trash isn't there oh like, yeah no it's it's stunning that house that they're but, in which is like made of like old recycled glass yeah for the little hut thing it's beautiful yeah and, and I do hope he does more animated films and is um, as ambitious as he was with this one the characters in Isle of Dogs I think that the highlights of it is the the dogs yeah and the boy yeah so I guess there was actually well, there's one dog that was in it the most, which was... Um, Chief. Chief. He had a little boy in it who... Well, because he was oh, Japanese, yeah. he didn't speak any English in it. He sort of... So he was talking a bit in Japanese and they didn't have any subtitles. But you could get, like, a good sense of him from how he was acting and stuff. So they did quite well with that. Like, there's just little moments where they just... You see his face that expressed so much. You could see the tears in his eyes and things. He felt like a little boy. Like, I thought that was really, really well done. Wow. I think we'll leave it there. Yeah, and thanks for joining us on this countryside walk. Thank you. On Top Hills. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you again next time. Bye. I wasn't filming. <laughs>